Howdy. Can everybody hear me? I can hear you. All right, good, good. That means it's, that means we're good. Gabby looks like she's outside, which is nice. <laughs> You know. Hey. hey. <laughs> Can, you hear, Can you hear me? Hi. It's Larry, it's Larry with, a with a haircut. Looking good, Larry. Who can, Who can hear me? I can hear you. You can hear me. All right, then I'm going. Then I'm doing good. I'm going to. There's a serious echo happening. Not sure where we're from. Hello. 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 Can you hear me now? Yep, yep still in my car. But I, I hear, hear you. you. <laughs> trying, trying to figure out how to get everyone on the screen. screen. Hopefully, this is our last one of these. Hopefully. Oh there he is. Dan, hey, how you doing? <laughs> They can see us. We can see them. Can you hear me? I can hear everybody. Good. Good. Okay. okay. I'm still, I'm still working this out. this out. Can you hear me? Yeah. Now? I can hear you now. I'm going to say that. Keep showing the phone. It'd stay like that, like his picture.
Can you hear me now, Damon? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. Looking for the site map. Is that where you're cutting it off? Yeah, she's looking for that, the realtor. You're going. Somebody should help him. Who's having trouble? Noise. Yes. All right, so I'm not the only one. All right. Yes. Yeah, I hear it too. I don't know why it keeps showing like going like that. Yeah. This guy, I, he's the admin. Hello, he just joined Gary. Gary. Gary and John just joined. I see them. Yeah. Um, Nobody else. These people are just joining. Mm -hmm. 16 participants. Gary Mulligan. Are you, but is that like Pateri? Oh. It's not spelled right. Maybe. Can't see him. Is that him? There he is, yeah. yeah I see him. How you doing? Maybe. Wow. Hey, Gabby. Gabby, can you hear me? Who, me? Who, me? I'm talk, asking Gabby if she's got recording. Yes, us. I can hear you. Everybody's echoing and there's strange noises going on, and I can't figure out how to get everybody on my screen at once. Gabrielle is the girl who sent me the story. Should be um, up in the right, upper right hand corner. Can you say that again? Mm -hmm. Is Larios? Mm -hmm. 
So try muting everyone. Can you do that? Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm going to do right now. Um, that doesn't seem to be a little bit slow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm using my own. Larry, I like your haircut. Ask everybody to go on mute unless you were speaking. Maybe that'll stop everyone. Waiting to see Alan sign in. Guys, you are going as a dustman. I think it's you. She's got okay, so maybe something's up with the mind. Yeah. You're getting a lot of feedback, or we heard we're hearing a lot of feedback. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see. Before I start this meeting, I need everyone to mute themselves. You know how to do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're getting too much feedback. There is a way where you can set it up to just push the space bar as a push to talk button. You can try that. Hey, what? I'm sorry. You're talking to me Larry, can you mute yourself? I I had. No. Okay. Okay. How do I mute myself? Are you on an iPad? No, I'm no, on my regular computer desktop. Up in the upper right-hand corner, 
So here, are, yeah. there's the blue button. You should be able to mute yourself. Okay. Okay. Hold on, I muted. No, not muted. Gary, I think he's also uh, dialed in with his phone. Yeah, because we can I still did. hear him. Yeah, we can still hear you, Larry. So you I think that's. Can hear me? Yeah, you're because you're dialed in with your phone. The feedback is so bad. Yeah. Okay. That's probably why we're getting the feedback. It's me. Well, it's better now. Okay. Okay. Um. I'd like to call the uh, June 9th meeting of the uh, Town of Ulster Planning Board to order via Zoom. Um, could stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance if you would join me. Thank you. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic, for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, mute. And we could do a roll call. Ms. Senior? Ms. Romquist? Yes. Mr. Decker? Mr. Mr. Furman? You all hear me? I'm sorry. Here. Hi guys, I'm sorry I'm late. Okay, okay gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. This is John Mr. Here, Mr. Mr. Decker, Mr. Furman, Mr. Mr. Moore. Here. Mr. Mr. Stravopoulos. Mr. Stravopoulos. There. Oh, oh, okay. And, and Chairman Mulligan. Here. So we have a quorum. President, can you hear me? I'm not sure who that is. Did you send an email? Apparently, we have our challenges tonight with, uh, with the audio, so we're going to have to bear with us. Has every board member had a chance to look at last month's minutes? Yes. Okay, are there any deletions or corrections? Hearing none, can I have a motion to accept last month's minutes? I'll make that motion. Okay, there's a second. I'll second it. Second by Larry. All those in favor say aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay. Minutes are approved. Uh, I'd also like to take this opportunity to welcome David Church. David will be our new consultant planner, replacing Alan. And welcome, David. Thank you. Hi. Hello. And uh, just want to say thank. Maybe meet you all Hopefully, maybe next month. Very good. And of course, I just want to thank Alan Sorensen for his 10 plus years of work uh, with our, the Town of Ulster Planning Board. Uh, Alan is a consummate professional, and uh, I've enjoyed working with him immensely. I wish you all the best, Alan. Okay. First item of old business is uh, Twin Creeks major subdivision. Uh, tonight we are going to just discuss the change in the site plan. And uh, Alan, if you are here, would you like to just summarize what the changes are? Hi, Gary. Yeah, we um, through some extensive research with our attorney and so forth, we nailed down where the right-of-way was that came to 
to light or came up for discussion during the public hearing last, I think almost a year ago. And um, so we moved the, the one cul-de-sac road to follow the right of way so that we wouldn't obstruct the right of way wouldn't be going through somebody's yard or something like that. The right of way would follow the road. So um, that was, um, we moved the Southern cul-de-sac road to match where the right of way would fall. It, um, so that was the change in the in the land plan. It's still 21 lots. The septic areas remain the same except for one. Um, it's already been back through the Ulster County Health Department. Uh, they're ready to go with it. And we have to get preliminary approval before they'll issue their approval. Okay. Um, I noticed in the uh, one of the renditions, there was some green areas. I assume, is that stormwater or is that uh, stormwater runoff reserve area or? Yes, those are areas to address the stormwater. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. And they'll, and they'll remain now as, as part of the association property. Um, okay. We have them labeled the roads and, and those two areas will be owned by the homeowners or property owners association. Okay. It's still going to be a private road, I assume, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Alan, any comments? I know you're here, Alan. I hope. I'm not seeing him anymore. Yeah, he's there. Uh, you need to unmute yourself, Alan, if you can. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you gotcha. Go. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. It's okay. Um, so back in um, 2008, uh, sure, there was a 21 lot subdivision that was approved on this site. Um, there was a secret neck deck that was uh, adopted. After the uh, 2008 crash, the um, the, uh, I need you to join the, conversation the property too. owner um, actually went back to the county after following the maps and uh, had uh, lots yeah, okay. involved. Let's continue. Um, so uh, Alan Lord and his company came in uh, to uh, you know bring the, uh, renew, not renew, but uh, come forth with a proposal. Yeah. To uh, again, so the property and the muted, muted right now. And um, they have, uh, <laughs> we had the, they came in originally with the yeah. exact same um, yeah. lot layout that was approved, uh, proposed in 2008. Then we had the pu preliminary public hearing about a year ago. There was uh, residents uh, brought up the uh, concerns <laughs> with the deeded right of way. Uh, as Mr. Lord just explained, uh, they've amended the preliminary um, subdivision plat so that the roads not coincide with those right away. And um, that is where uh, this application is. It is a major subdivision, it requires two public hearings. Um, probably, I think the first question for the board is to look at this uh, revised subdivision plat. I recommend that they review it with um, the uh, with, with David as well as uh, Dennis Larios, uh, and then make a determination um, of whether it's uh, you know ready for. Uh, scheduling the final plat public hearing. So um, this, I guess I could share my screen and kind of show you what was originally proposed and what is currently proposed, if you'd like me to do that. Yeah, that would be great, thanks. Okay. Um, so can you see this is the current proposed subdivision layout. Can everyone see that? Yes. Okay, so uh, actually I got a little crazy with the pens there, but this is this little section here where I had the arrow I'm moving around. That's actually part of the deeded right away as well, that little segment. And so these are the contracts that are proposed. Uh, and then this is the extension of the, of the right away that's on the map. This is the Asopus Creek here, and this is Platico Creek, hence the name Twin Creeks. Um, 
This is a um, 90 foot wide uh, easement uh, that's provided within HOA. And I'm just gonna scroll down and so again, it's, it's 21 lots. They're still proposing 21 lots. Um, in 2008, this is the subdivision plat that was approved. Um, so in that subdivision plat, um, at the time there were actually three uh, drainage parcels that were proposed that would have been uh, deeded to the town. Um, so the distinction between this, uh, the current proposed action and the um, subdivision plat that was approved back in 2008, there's a slight realignment of the, uh, the cul-de-sacs and the removal of these uh, drainage uh, parcels uh, that were back in 2008 were being considered uh, to be conveyed to the town. Uh, do you, we did receive a letter from the Olson County Highway Department. They are okay with the, the current proposed access. Um, they do require preliminary plat approval before the issue of the permits for that. Uh, the applicant is going is back before the health department to secure um, uh, septic system design approvals, and they've provided additional uh, well log information that uh, I recommend you know be thoroughly reviewed by the town's uh, designated engineer. All right, so that's basically, I believe, the action we can take tonight. Um, unless any members have questions of Alan while, while he's here. Alan Lord, that is. Um, Alan, any questions? Alan Lord, any questions you have from us? No, I guess I'm just curious if anyone sees an issue with changing that one road from the original plan to, to the current plan. Um, that's really all we're looking to square away. Right. Yeah, I don't see an issue. Well, I think uh, the board is there way I can speak up. But Andrew, go ahead. No, uh, my name is Ezra. Mula, I live on Doris Lane, abutting the property. Well, Mr. Uh, Ezra, I'm sorry. Um, there will be. Uh, here. There will here be a mother. Right. There will be a. There will be another hearing um, tonight. We're not taking public comments. Uh, this was just an update from the applicant uh, regarding this this uh, project. So there will be uh, there will be another public hearing scheduled here um, probably within two months and hopefully it'll be in public yeah, I mean in the town hall where we have much better uh, circumstances here to hear people and and to conduct the, the public hearing so, okay. Okay. so, so I was you. unsure of what what, 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 what what's voted on tonight because yeah nothing there nothing's being voted on this is just another uh, application uh, excuse me another appearance by the applicant to just to further explain uh the project and as you might have heard he's just uh, changing some of the roadways to accommodate a right-of-way and uh, yeah and that's and that's myself i'm the owner of right-of-ways yeah okay so, so that's that's been addressed and it's going to be addressed by the town engineer also so. gary good evening it's councilman kitchen Yes, Councilman, go ahead. I was just calling because Mr. Mueller was supposed to be, no, wants to be notified by email or, or mail that these meetings are taking place through the planning board so he could be involved and let his voice be heard. So I just want to make sure that he'll be contacted as a neighboring property owner uh, moving forward of when, when these meetings are going to take place, sir. Okay, we'll certainly take care of that, Gabrielle. Who was that meeting for? Okay. Thank you, Chairman. You're welcome. 
Uh, all right, let's uh, let's move on to the next item of business, which is uh, Johnson Group Twenty Eight Major Subdivision. <coughs> Actually, let, let me back up. I do need a I do need a motion to refer uh, this to the town engineers. I'll make that motion, but can I please ask that everyone mute their? It's really hard to hear everybody. Yeah, I agree. I think some of that issue is people are calling in for the audio portion, and they are they are not muted. They're live, so we're picking up a lot of feedback, unfortunately. A lot, and it's hard to hear when someone talks. It, right. Okay, so if I could have a motion to refer the. Uh, I'll make that motion. Yeah. Way out to the town engineers. Thank. You. Okay. Second. Uh, I'm with you. I'll second that. All right. Motion and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Let's aye. move on to uh, Johnson Route Twenty Eight. Hi, good evening, everybody. So, uh, should I share my screen or? Yes, if you could, sure, yeah, thanks. I got a map up. Hi. Great, so uh, hopefully you can see my screen now. Uh, through the last, I'm sorry, I must figure if I can zoom out a little bit. Uh, I can't figure that out here. So I think I've got the, the meat of it here uh, up on the screen. Uh, we uh, last were in front of the board, I believe it was the January meeting uh, where the board had asked that we uh, fix an encroachment uh, with the neighboring property uh, over on this right side. Uh, so we adjusted the map since the last meeting uh, to delete this lot line right here that my mouse is going over uh, and adding this new lot line uh, to uh, repair a site plan encroachment with the neighboring property. Uh, we have been working towards uh, this lot line revision to repair uh, the ownership boundaries between all of the buildings. Uh, the Johnson Ford building, as you can see here, uh, the previous lot line uh, ran right across the front of the building, uh, as well as this is the former Central Hudson building. Uh, the lot line ran uh, about 50 feet off of the front of the building, and we are fixing that uh, and repairing the lot lines to better match the utilization of the property. So uh, we've redrawn the lot lines to show again and accommodate the uh, utility of the uh, parcels uh, as opposed to the uh, antiquated lot lines uh, that this campus has evolved from over the last 40 years. Uh, so we're kind of cleaning up the property lines. This will give cleaner tax bills uh, so when the landlord bills each of the individual tenants, uh, the tax bills will reflect, uh, again, the utilization uh, of the property. Uh, currently, when the tax bill goes out to like Johnson Ford, they pay, uh, or the Ford French, current Ford franchisee, uh, it, uh, they get that tax bill and like 16% of the Camping World parcel, because the Camping World parcel covers everything, including all of the frontage up to Route 28. Um, part of this is uh, we are working on and uh, have a final draft of a road maintenance agreement. We'll be submitting uh, hopefully here in the next week uh, for uh, Jason's review. And I believe those were all of my uh, open items uh, for this review. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alan, comments? Uh, 
Oh, no comments. That was easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is certainly not easy, this format, that's for sure. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, it's very awkward. Okay. There he um, is. There you are. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, sorry about that. Um, all right, so this, I think this matter is, um, will be straightforward. It's, it's, there's been a lot of moving parts over the last year as, as Paul's worked to get all the pieces together. Um, and I think he's done an effective job of that. Um, I had received the um, lot line adjustment application for RELAX 845 that you submitted. Uh, I discussed this a little bit with Jason Kovacs before the meeting. Um, really, we need to look at this as, as one action. So even though there's various property owners, uh, as long as we have the consent of all the involved property owners, this should just be treated as one you know, major resubdivision, uh, basically uh, showing everything that you show on this map, Paul. Um, and uh, actually, it might be easier if um, out a little bit on that, or uh, I don't know if you can hear me. I, I can hear you. If, okay. if, what we're, if what we're on the map. Can you zoom out on that map? Um, uh... If not, I can, so I can, I'll just... Uh, yeah, why don't you, I'll stop the screen share because I've got it open in my browser, not in a PDF viewer, so... Okay, I, I, so, not... yeah, I'll pull it up. Uh, let me share the screen. Uh, it's a large file, so it's probably showing up that way. There we go. Can everyone see that? Yes. Okay, so, you know, what was before us included everything everything on this side of this line. And so now we have this little uh, additional lot line deletion and uh, adjustment here. But overall, the, the proposed action is, you know, a major resubdivision uh, of all these parcels. Uh, it's more than uh, three lots. That's why it's classified as such. And so moving forward, Paul, that's, uh, we just need to look at it as, as one action. Uh, because this boundary line adjustment is technically with a proposed lot that doesn't currently exist yet. So we need to look at it as, as a whole. Okay. So however you want to do it, you've got two applications. So if you want it to be one, I don't think we'd have to do anything to the first application then, but. Right. It just needs to be one application. We just need to consent of all the property owners that are involved and I think it's from there, it's pretty straightforward. You're not, um, nothing's being constructed. As you pointed out, this lot reconfiguration of the lots makes a lot more sense, better aligns with the existing businesses that are out there. I believe there was a road maintenance agreement that you're working on, so we need that. Um, and so I would ask, you know, that you just update the environmental assessment form to reflect. I'm going to call it the current proposed action uh, and that uh, you just move forward as one application involving everything that you see on this plan. Okay. okay. So am I ready for a conditional final approval pending the road maintenance agreement? Uh, no. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, because it's a major, uh, resubdivision, uh, it requires two public hearings. Um, Jason, I'll, I'll need to defer to you because this is, <laughs> the, the boundary of this has changed, um, which mm -hmm. leads me to think that we need to redo the, uh, a preliminary, I think we still need two public hearings, a preliminary and a final. Alan, I think you're right. We would have to start the process over with um, with two public hearings, yes. So the good news is though, I think you've worked out all the changes, <laughs> which was the hard part. Um, process wise, moving forward from here, uh, you know, the, the board could uh, schedule the preliminary public hearing for its next meeting to get that started uh, pending 
you know, receipt of the revised EAF, uh, and then, you know, uh, you know, it's over two months, you can have the, your public hearings uh, conducted. The board should just take a few minutes to study this. Uh, maybe just treat this as a sketch plan at this point. And if you accept the proposed layout, um, you know, that's the only action I think you could take tonight. Okay, so um, board members, any questions uh, of the applicant regarding the, uh, the new sketch plan? <clears throat> Larry, are you, I can't hear you, Larry. Gabby, can you unmute him? Which is Larry? He's, He's admin. He's admin. There he is. That's him. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? And now, yes. Yes. At our last At our meeting. Not working today. Warren had a question as to the boundaries. <laughs> Larry, is your phone still on? My, I'm, I'm going through my phone, yes. <clears throat> yes, the problem. You're also on the computer. You can probably hang the phone up. You probably hang the phone up. Hey, Gabby, you can mute his phone also. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me now? Larry, is your phone off? Did you hang up? I'm trying to get it off. Hold on. So I believe he asked, he said Warren had questions on the last time. Yep. Hello? I can hear you. Go ahead, Larry. No, I don't know. I'm, I apologize. Warren, can you speak to the question? Yeah. Warren, you had a question? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Warren. So, the only issues I had was with Campers World about the fact that they never came to the planning board. I approached them, that was probably four months ago. And I haven't heard back about their site plan changes. So I guess I'm going to have to go back to them and find out how they want to proceed. Okay. So Warren, I, I said that I, I can help with that. And I had asked if you could give me a letter. Um, I believe we're down to uh, the painting issue was resolved. So I think we were down to or the color issue was resolved. So I believe we were down to the flagpole and the non-shielded lighting uh, being the issues uh, that were still open, correct? That is correct. And uh -huh. as every project like this I deal with, they had to run it up to corporate and yeah. corporate did not respond. Right. So, you know, again, I think you approached and talked to a local manager. Um, if I have a letter um, I, I can take another avenue and help you in that pursuit. I will uh, generate that letter as soon as possible. 
you have to understand that I've been tasked with most of the reopening of businesses in the town. Well, understood. Understood. I, I, and with, when you're ready, uh, like I said, I can, I can help you and uh, bring them, get them to come in and uh, work for compliance. And, uh, you know, we, we agree on the lighting. I, I don't fully understand what the code was on the flagpole, but uh, you can have them address that also. I would appreciate that since there's only me and no one else. Yeah. Yep. Understood. So again, a simple letter just so that I can uh, get it from uh, Paul Johnson's attorney to Camping World's attorney saying you as a tenant are, you know, out of bounds um, and, you know, we can apply pressure from the other direction. Very good. I appreciate the help. Okay, thank you. So uh, I need two motions. One is to re, uh, accept the sketch plan as presented this evening. And the second would be to schedule a preliminary hearing for next month's meeting on Ju July 14th. Actually, we could do that as one motion. I'll make that motion. Okay, thank you, Anna. Is there a second? <laughs> Second by Andrew. Discussion? All those in favor, say aye. You can raise your hand. Aye. aye. Okay, motion's carried. Aye. aye. All right, thanks, Paul. Great, thank you, everybody. Alan Sorensen, thank you. Goodbye. We'll see you soon, I'm sure. It's been a pleasure planning with you over the many years. <laughs> Have a great night, everybody. You too. Thanks. Next item of old business, John Gianetti, uh, lot line deletion reapproval. I don't believe anyone will be here for that one. Um, it's just a reapproval because it wasn't filed in time. Right, okay. Anybody have any uh, questions about this application? Okay. Hearing none, we do have a resolution. Uh, Alan, would you like to summarize the resolution? Gabby, you'll have to unmute him. Uh, yep. Can you hear me now? I think they have there the option go. to unmute themselves. I just made them all okay. muted. Um, Okay, Alan, we got you. You got me? Okay. I do. So um, this is just a simple online adjustment. Um, it's a seeker type two action. And um, it's between uh, two property, or obviously two properties, but uh, SBL 39.351-7 and 23. And the applicant is uh, John Gianetti. Uh, the, I'm just going to read, the, the board has the, the uh, resolution. So it's just going to the now therefore be resolved. The plan board has determined they have fully complied with the procedural requirements, part 617 of the State Environmental Quality Review Law. Uh, further be resolved, the town to plan board hereby grants lot line adjustment approval as described above the John Gianetti, subject to the conditions, limitations set forth below. One, plan may be filed in the office of the county clerk after signed by the chairman of the planning board. Two, no changes, erasures, modifications, or revision shall be made to any plat after approval by the planning board or endorsed in writing on the plat. Three, the final plat must be filed in the office of the county clerk within 62 days of the date the final plat is approved by the planning board. And four, all fees, including consultant fees, shall be paid. And that is the resolution for the board's consideration. Okay, thank you. Um, You're welcome. Just a procedural question. Do we need to, um, do, do we need a motion to declare this a, um, a uh, secret type two or, or is that included in the resolution? That is included in the resolution, but um, 
you know, being that you're doing this for Zoom, it wouldn't hurt just to, you know, add, I would have a motion to classify it as the seeker type two act. That's what I thought. All right, can I have a motion to uh, declare this yep. as a seeker type two action? That would be my motion. Uh, that was Larry and yes. second yes, by Frank. Larry. Okay, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. aye. aye. Motion's carried, thank you. Okay. And uh, I need a motion to accept the resolution as read. I'll make the motion, I'll put it. I'll second, second it, Decker. Decker. Okay, motion by Alquist, second by Decker. Discussion? We'll do a roll call vote. Ms. Siener? Yes. Aye. Mr. Alquist? Yes. Mr. Decker? Yes. Yes. Mr. Stravopoulos? <laughs> Mr. Mulligan? Yes. Okay, motion is carried. Thank you. Next item of business is Pest Master. Do we have someone from the Pest Master tonight? Dennis. Dennis, oh, oh, of course. Hi, Dennis. Hello. Hello. Sorry, my dog just started barking. <laughs> really? Okay, uh, Dennis, do you just want to update us with the application? Well, we actually had made all the changes, uh, changes to landscaping, uh, lighting details, uh, a signage detail, uh, colored building elevation, um, and all those changes were made in late March. And of course, there was no meeting in April. And then uh, last month, uh, we weren't aware that we had to be online for the meeting. Uh, uh, so we missed we missed any action at the main meeting, but we would um, there's five five seat set of drawings. Uh, a, a church site plan had been approved by the board, I think, in 2012. This is a smaller use of the site. Uh, Pest Master, I, I think you all know, is you know on, on Lucas Avenue in the city of Kingston near Forsyth Park. They need a, a bigger uh, headquarters and uh, operations center. And uh, they were at the meeting, uh, I think, in February or March, uh, presenting uh, their business uh, reasons for move, wanting to move here. And I think we've satisfied uh, uh, all the comments of the county planning board and the town planning board at this point. OK. Comments, Alan? Um, yes, I uh, agree with. Uh, Dennis's presentation, all the um, previous comments have been addressed by the applicant. Uh, we did draft a resolution for the board's consideration, actually for the May meeting, and uh, here again, recommend uh, that the planning board grant um, site plan approval for the proposed action. Well, actually, uh, let me clarify, the planning board's gonna, David, this is also for your edification, in the town of Ulster, certain site plans, uh, the planning board approves other site plans with uh, more than 2,500 square feet of new development. The planning board plays an advisory role. And so technically the resolution here is referring this application to the town board with a recommendation that the town board grant site plan approval. And I have the resolution here, so. Okay, okay. just uh, if I may, uh, your notes indicated we need to uh, do a secret determination of non-significance with a neg deck. Um, should that be separate from the resolution? Uh, yeah, I would do that, yes. Okay, all right. Um, if I could have a motion to that effect to neg deck this application. I'll make, I'll that, make motion. that motion, Decker. Decker, is there a second? 
Almquist, second. Almquist, second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That motion is carried. Um, there were some Ulster County Planning Board required modifications. Um, and I'm just wondering if we need to discuss those. I know they're addressed in the resolution, correct, Alan? I the lighting. You know, double check. There was a light, the, there was a requirement for um, a lighting photometric plan. The applicant did provide the lighting specification sheets. Um, they're all international dark sky compliant fixtures. Uh, and I think the sentiment of the planning board at the last meeting was to recommend that the town board override the Ulster County Planning Board's required modification for submitting a lighting photometric plan. Right. Since the light poles meet the town code requirements and the fixtures are international dark sky compliant. I, I agree. Okay. All right. Uh, then if you would uh, please read the resolution. Okay. Um, so this is a resolution uh, referral to the town board uh, for conditional site plan approval. Paul Alley doing business as pest master. Um, I'm gonna, Gary, if, if okay with you, rather than reading every bit of it, I'm just gonna get to the, the, the meat of the, the whereas is. Um, so whereas upon review of the Ulster County Planning Board's required modifications, Town of Ulster Planning Board determined to require the applicant to comply with most other required modifications, but determined to override the requirement for a lighting photometric plan since the light pole meets the town code requirement and the proposed fixtures are international dark sky compliant. Whereas the Planning Board upon review of the entire record uh, found the proposed action is unlisted action pursuant to the state environmental quality review law Whereas the Planning Board, upon review of the entire record, including Shorty AF Parts 1 and 2, found the proposed action would not have an adverse environmental impact. Based upon the proposed plan and mitigation measures, and recommended that the Town Board issue a negative declaration pursuant to the seeker rec rec uh, regulations. Now, therefore, be resolved, the Planning Board has determined they've fully complied with the procedural requirements of Part 617 of the State Environmental Quality Review Law. Further be resolved, the Town of the Planning Board refers this matter to the Town of Ulster Town Board with a recommendation to grant site plan approval to Pest Master on the above reference site, subject to the conditions, limitations, restrictions set forth below. One, compliance with applicable zoning and building laws, rules, and regulations. Two, compliance with all representations made by the applicant. Three, compliance with site plan design plans and all details as cited herein. For the applicant secures Ulster County Health Department approval for proposed septic system on the septic site. Uh, five towns consulting planner and building inspector are hereby authorized to approve minor site changes of ministerial nature, which may arise due to unforeseen circumstances in the project site development. And six all fees, including consultant fees, shall be paid. And that is the resolution for your consideration. Thank you. Can I have a motion to accept the resolution as read? I make that motion. I'll second it out. Ms. Hainer, second by Mr. Alquist. Discussion? Do a roll call vote? Ms. Hainer? Yes. Mr. Alquist? Yes. Mr. Decker? Yes. Yes. Mr. Stravopoulos? Yes. Chairman Mulligan? Yes. And motion is carried. As is. Okay. Next item of business is combined energy services site plan review. Dennis, is that you also? Yeah, for Mike Taylor. Okay. Again, this has been in front of the board for uh, several months, but uh, this obviously the April meeting. And the the uh, 
think we've made all the changes that the planning board asked with respect to uh, changes to landscape plan, uh, sediment erosion control details and plan, uh, some lighting information, signage information, and the DOT has uh, it's ready to issue a permit for the entrance uh, pending planning board approval of, actually we went to the DOT first and they, um, they basically uh, preliminarily approved uh, the entrance geometry and location and are just, uh, but they can't issue a permit until a uh, few folks act. So, but we're in good stead with the uh, DOT. Uh, it's, this is a depot with three 30,000 gallon propane tanks uh, for refueling of their uh, delivery trucks. And uh, so there's, there's really no building or operations on the site except for those occasional trucks refilling for propane deliveries. Um, Alan, comments? Yeah, just, uh, you know, this is the site of um, the former, or a portion of the former beaver scrap site, which for years kind of played the, the uh, am I, can you hear me okay, Gary? It's, yeah, okay. Um, so this, for years, the town's been trying to get the site cleared up. So um, this project actually uh, will be a dramatic improvement uh, to what, you've seen over the years on the site. Um, and um, the, our recommendation is uh, to grant conditional site plan uh, approval for this action. Uh, I had prepared a resolution last month um, and um, I just pulled it up on the screen here. Um, so, this is very similar to the Kimlin propane facility that was uh, approved about a year ago on Route 28. Um, and this is another one where the county had asked for a lighting photometric plan, but the board again determined uh, that given the limited lighting that was being proposed, the fact that the lighting pole meets the town code requirement and a proposed fixture is international dark sky compliant that would override the uh, recommendation. So while it's contained in the resolution, Gary, I think um, I re would recommend that you just have three motions. One, first is to classify it as a seeker type two action. Two, to override the Walter County Planning Board requirement for a lighting photometric plan. Uh, and then three, to adopt the resolution as uh, drafted. All right, if I could have a motion to uh, uh, declare this a secret type two. I'll make that, I'll make that motion, motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'll push right. for a second. Motion, motion and seconded discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. Second motion would be to override the Ulster County Planning Board's required modification for a photometric lighting plan for the. I'm pushed here. I'll make that motion. Okay. Decker, Decker I'll second it. Well, Mr. Almquist, seconded by Decker. Mr. Decker, uh, discussion. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. And if, Alan, if you would read the resolution. Okay, uh, I'm just going to read the further be it resolved, Gary, if you're okay. That's fine. Okay, so further be it resolved, Town of Ulster Planning Board hereby grant site plan approval. Michael C. Taylor with Orchard, um, with the Orchard of Towner Farm LLC on the above reference site subject to the conditions limitations set forth below. One, compliance with applicable zoning and building laws, rules and regulations. Two, compliance with all representations made by the applicant 
Three, compliance with site plan, design plans, and all details cited herein. Four, the applicant secures New York State DOT approval for proposed access to the subject site. Five, the town's consulting planner and building inspector are hereby authorized to approve minor site changes of a ministerial nature, which may arise due to unforeseen circumstances in the project site development. And six, all fees, including consultant fees, shall be paid. And that is the resolution for your consideration. Thank you. Could I have a motion to accept the resolution as read? Tom Quist, I'll make that motion. Okay. Second? I'll second that. Dick. Tainer, second. Discussion? Roll call vote. Ms. Hainer? Yes. Mr. Almquist? Yes. Mr. Decker? Yes. Yes. Mr. Shervopoulos? Mr. Shervopoulos? I think that was a yes. That was it, okay. Chairman Mulligan? Yes. Yes. All right, Andrew said yes, okay. Resolution is carried. Site plan is approved. Can you hear me, Gabby? Who is that? Yeah, Pardon? yeah, it's a bad echo, like, but I slightly hear you. Thank you, folks. Welcome. Thank you, Alan, for uh, all your good work for the town. Dennis, thank you. It's been a pleasure. pleasure working with you. Oh, same here. Thank you. Okay, next item of business, Catskill Park Storage, site plan amendment. Dar, would you like to uh, give us an update? Sure. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. So, um, basically, this is our uh, third time in front of the board. Um, the updated, the latest updated plan that we submitted, uh, going through the list that Alan reviewed it is, is most of the comments have been completed. Uh, I believe we. Um, Gabby, can you hear me? We have a few. Hey, uh, it's still echoing. Okay. Um, just as far as the you know a few a few comments that were pending, uh, one of them was the traffic circulation. We did show the um, fire truck maneuver route throughout the site. I'm not sure if the um, fire chief responded to that or not but we did demonstrate that a fire truck can actually go through the loop. Um, as far as the uh, utilities, Central Hudson is already on site. They installed, uh, I believe, at least three utility poles um, right in front of the existing building there. So the extension to get electric into the unit uh, will, can be done probably above ground with throwing one or two poles and getting the electric there. Um, we can provide that detail when we apply for a building permit and just add that as a, as a, as a detailed plan to show how we're getting electric to, the, uh, to those units, if that's acceptable. Um, the signs, we have an existing sign uh, currently uh, on site. Uh, it's the old sign. It's a multi-business type sign and we're not going to change that. Uh, applicant is not proposing any new signs, so that's why we don't have any details for it. Um, the controlled entry, um, the latest plan that we submitted, um, I don't know if it's, yep, right there. We are showing a gate, whether it's going to be an, a, like a, a two swing gate or most likely maybe a sliding gate. Uh, it will be easier to deal with, with snow removal and stuff. So it's either going to be the gate or a camera system that will provide security or a combination of both. The existing two units by Route 28 at the entrance there currently have cameras. So they, they, there are security being provided. Um, by the owner to try to control motion around these um, uh, these units. Uh, the rest of the comments are basically um, erosion and selling control plan. We did provide that on page uh, three, I believe. If you scroll down uh, just one more page. Um, we um, showed on, on, this is basically showing where the cell fence is going to go, limited disturbance uh, and, a, and a construction entrance. On page two, um, I know the um, uh, town engineer uh, asked for uh, some uh, finished floor elevations 
the building is going to be stepped to follow the existing grade. We're not doing regrading of the site. Uh, on page five of that set, uh, I did show a uh, detail for how the foundation is going to look like right there on the right, and at, like the uh, building itself um, with you know step every thirty or forty feet to follow the grade. Um, so. Um, Again, to keep the site disturbance into minimum, uh, site has already been disturbed. So um, at this stage, the only the only recommendation was was you know still left over from the uh, engineering review letter was just the idea of trying to you know provide some kind of a treatment for the runoff water. But uh, I really don't have a the grade to be able to do that and. Um, we are already under one acre. The site has been disturbed. We're not changing the impervious. It's just going from gravel to roof, which is the same thing. So I'm not sure if, you know, if we can, you know, I was hoping that we can basically skip that recommendation. Uh, other than that, I'm really hoping that you can give me a conditional final today. Okay. Comments, Alan? Um, yeah, this matter, again, has been before the board uh, for several months. Um, there was, uh, I don't want to mischaracterize, but the, the site has been previously disturbed. So there is storage of containers and everything on the portion of the site where the um, storage units are being proposed. So the, the new, no, new owners of the site have actually cleaned up the site quite substantially. Um, this, where the storage units are being proposed, is um, down gradient from, uh, you know, Route 28, and then there's uh, some significant existing vegetation here. Uh, so it's kind of tucked down um, in a way uh, from the roadway. Um, they meet the bulk requirements uh, of the code, the lighting, um, uh, the fixtures around uh, the storage units are dark sky compliant. Uh, lighting levels are, are very modest. Um, you know, in here, we're looking at about two foot candles. Um, I do think, you know, uh, this is another one where it's a, the planning board has an advisory opinion. It, it would go to the town board with a recommendation. I think you could uh, refer it to the town board with a recommendation to grant conditional site plan approval, but there are some conditions that need to be addressed. Um, I think the, uh, we need more details in terms of how um, access is going to be controlled in and out of the storage units. Um, you know, they're showing a gate here, but um, I think, you know, the, the applicant should you know, provide a little more details in that respect. Uh, is it going to be a passcode? What are the hours uh, of operation that people would be permitted in and out of here? Is it going to be daylight hours only, or is there is it going to be? It, it's probably. I mean, the, it's probably going to be. With, it, it is going to be with a passcode. Okay. And, uh, since it's gated and we have lighting all around it, so really anybody can access this unit anytime as far as they have the code. Okay. Okay. So those are the details that we need, uh, Qatar. It's um, we can. I mean, if that's something that we need to put it in a note on the final plan, that's going to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, issued to the board to sign. We can always put that on there, to, to, just to limit that or to, to indicate what are we providing. I mean, Mr. Do we Mr. Need Chairman. Mr. Larry. Chairman. Yes. Uh, Larry Decker. Uh, th was the issue of the storm water ever provided? I didn't hear it, but I've got a bad connection. I can speak to that. It's Dennis. Uh, Qatar came and met with me about my comment letter, and uh, I just have to review it with the town uh, MS4 team to make sure we're all on the same uh, page with respect to it. I, I think uh, the site is already disturbed. Uh, they're adding 22,000 square feet of building space you know, over what's existing hardened gravel lot. So they don't need to do a uh, stormwater pollution prevention plan. Uh, we'd, we had recommended a few uh, 
a few voluntary features that uh, so far uh, I don't think the owner has agreed to, but um, uh, but he uh, Qatar made some some reasonable arguments as to uh, why they they might not be feasible here. So um, if you're willing to leave that open between now and or as a condition that we sign off uh, with the town's uh, MS4 uh, team, you know, on the uh, review of the the drainage. Right now, the site sheet drains from uh, from the rear to the front and into a stream that cuts uh, through. Uh, the small store building uh, that's also owned by the applicant uh, used to be the wooden furniture store. Um, this project will really not impact adversely the, uh, the existing conditions. We just uh, I'd recommend they consider a few features that would uh, be, be more water quality uh, friendly features and uh, it's a difficult thing to collect uh, the sheet flow and get it to a, a treatment unit. Uh, it's not required by the town statute or the state statute as far as I can tell. Um, so we haven't signed off on it yet, but um, I, I met with Qatar uh, yesterday morning. He came to my office and reviewed their, their position on it. I respect that, and uh, I think it's an open issue, but there's not much, a lot to discuss. There might be a few small things they can do to uh, to make an improvement. But they aren't increasing the flow rate off the site, or are they uh, required to treat a water quality volume by, by either town statute or the state statute? My only thought is, can this be done, even if we give it conditional, by the board's meeting on Thursday? Are they meeting this Thursday? I thought they were. Maybe I'm wrong. Gabby, are they meeting Thursday? Do you know? Next Thursday. All right, a week from Thursday. All right. It could be handled by then. For sure. Yeah, OK. So the other issue, I think we need to discuss the county planning board's required modifications. Everyone, yes. did everyone see that, that list? Um, yes. Regarding the lighting and the requirement for a full photometric plan for the entire site, uh, my personal is I don't think that's necessary, but I would ask the applicant to consider upgrading the existing lighting on the current buildings to uh, dark sky compliant fixtures. Maybe you can address that. Um, I mean, I can always. Um, I know those light fixtures. My understanding has been put up there by Central Hudson. We can always contact them and see what kind of an upgrades they have. Um, whether they have a you know more shielded, more um, full cutoff. Um, um, this is something I definitely can relate to the client and see what he would be willing to be able to do. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm thinking more of the fixtures on the existing buildings. I assume there's there's lighting on those buildings, although I haven't done a site visit. Um, I think Gary is with us on the call. I see, I see him. Uh, I, get, I, I don't know if, if you, Gary, can you hear me? If you can just give me your input there on what's on the building. Um, I don't believe there's any lighting on the building that I can recall. Uh, basically just the pole lighting provided by Central Hudson. I believe there's a total of five poles um, with Central Hudson lighting fixtures. Okay. And I would be happy to uh, revise those to whatever is available from Central Hudson that may be compliant um, if possible. Okay, that would be great. Uh, the landscaping plan, there's been some clearing between uh, Route 28 and the site, but uh, obviously the county would like to see as much screening stay. Um, again, it's been a while since I've been up there. Has there been any more clearing between the Route 28 and the, and the, the vacant land that's there now? Do you, do you plan on tending more clearing or are you going to leave what's there? No, we're planning on leaving it as is. Yeah, okay. 
There you go. Here's the existing site. So I can see that. Okay. So, uh, yeah, there's there's a couple of trees there depicted. I assume there's more vegetation. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot more vegetation that's shown on this on the site plan. Yeah, I, that's that's what I recall. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, then I think uh, with Dennis uh, firm addressing the soil uh, erosion and sediment plan, if that can be addressed prior to the town board meeting, I think uh, the county's required modifications will have been addressed. Alan, do you see uh, any other issues with that? Um, no, I, the, as long as they're addressing the technical um, comments, the, uh, of the of the town doesn't get engineer, I think that's, that, that would be fine to refer it on to them. Okay. That would also be a condition of the town in the rest right. of the All right, so I know you have a re referral to the town board, a resolution to refer uh, this application to the town board uh, with a secret negative debt and conditional site plan approval. If you would like to uh, that. Yeah, I'll start with the, um, on the uh, existing, uh, just a quick observation on the existing single story Block building. Um, I I'm forgetting now whether that was recently painted. The facade was recently painted by the applicant. Um, but if not, you know, it's uh, that's something that should be considered as a condition, Gary, uh, just to clean up the the uh, the front facade of that existing building. Mr. Andy, you understand this comment? Um, I do understand the comment. Um, I don't, I think that it's in decent condition. Um, I have not painted it since we purchased it. Yeah, I think, I think it could use a coat of paint. If that's a requirement, then we'll, we'll comply. I would recommend that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. Uh, any discussion from the board? What was with the lighting again? You have some of these pictures here that are pointing out that are not dark sky compliant. The ones right here. The ones on on this uh, on the sheet on your screen here, right? Yeah. But Warren, um, because the. I think it was two months ago, two or three months ago, that there wasn't going to be any lights on the building at all, right? And then we said, no, nah, you got to have lights. And, but what, what did we just say before about the lights, that they're not good, that they're not bright enough, that they're not, what is? No, no, they're, the lighting that they're proposing for the new buildings are fine. They're okay, fine. all right, that's, I was confused on that, okay. Yeah, the, the issue is this existing building, you know, is, uh, it wouldn't take much to have a nice clean coat of paint on it to clean up the lines. Yep, okay. And, um, you know, I think Warren can work that out with the, uh, with the applicant. Um, and uh, you know, if you find the color scheme of the, the units, it's, you know, the, it, it should absolutely be done as part of this. And then these fixtures that I'm pointing out are the ones that, you know, are the old Central Hudson fixtures that just aren't dark sky compliant. Right. Okay. We all understand that Central Hudson does what they want. Right. Okay. Uh, yes, if you would. Uh, uh, I think the existing building that would be that would be uh, very much appreciated by the board, and uh, pass that sentiment on to Warren, who's actually listening, so he knows what we're looking for. 
And Alan, if you would like to read the resolution referring this matter to the town board. Okay. Um, so Gary, I'd recommend that you, um, there's gonna be a recommendation in, in the resolution, it's a, uh, the planning board upon review of the entire record on a proposed action would not have an adverse environmental impact based upon a proposed plan and mitigation measures recommended to the town board issue a secret negative declaration. Now therefore be resolved the planning board has determined fully complied with the procedural requirements part 617 of the state uh, review law. Further be resolved, Town of Ulster Planning Board refers this matter to the Town Board with a recommendation to grant site plan approval for the Catskill Park LLC on the above reference site subject to conditions, limitations, restrictions set forth below. One, compliance with the applicable zoning building laws, rules, and regulations. Two, compliance with all representations made by the applicant. Three, compliance with site plan design plans and all details as cited herein. Four, uh, the applicant addresses all technical revisions required by the town designated engineer. Um, four uh, or five, the, the applicant um, uh, paints the, uh, the facade of the existing building. Um, which will be subject to the uh, review and approval by the town code enforcement officer or building inspector. There is some adding to this little screen based on the discussion tonight. Um, we also talked about um, a note should be added to the plan set with respect to um, the passcode and, and control of access into and out of the site. Six, town's consulting planner and building inspector are hereby authorized to approve minor site changes of a ministerial nature, which may arise due to unforeseen circumstances and project site development. And all fees, including consultant fees, shall be paid. Um, did I miss anything? Uh, they were gonna up, also upgrade some of the existing fixtures so that they're dark sky compliant. As I believe that was another condition, Mr. Chair. I'll have some fixtures if, if, uh, if they're available. Okay. If they're available from Central Hudson, right guys? Yes. Correct. Okay. So I will revise the resolution accordingly and um, also amend the draft resolution for the town board and get that to Gabby. Okay. So if I could have a motion to accept the resolution as read and amended. Almquist here, I'll make that motion. Mr. Almquist, or second. I'll second that motion. Mr. Staropoulos. Can you hear me okay, Gary? Yes, you're a little, a little fuzzy, but we got you. Um, any discussion? Thank you. All right, roll call vote. Ms. Sainer? Yes. Mr. Almquist? Yes. Mr. Decker? Yes. Mr. Stravopoulos? Yes. Chairman Mulligan? Yes. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you to Mr. Rain uh, for your cooperation and uh, good luck to you. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate all your help. Take care. Thank you for your time. And, and I just want to say to Alan, uh, it's been a you know, pleasure working with you. Uh, you're a very good professional and I enjoyed every moment and every project that you know we built on with you. We, you know, I wish you Best of luck on your next uh, uh, step in your career. Thank you, Darren. My sincere gratitude. Thank you. Yep. We'll stay in touch. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have a good evening. Have a good, evening. Have a good evening. Next item of uh, old business, all about construction, site plan amendment. Let's see. 
Thomas Allen. Um, yeah, I'm going to pull this one up from the board. All right. All right. This one. Um, can everyone see this okay? Yes. All right. I'm going to go to the site plan. So this, there was the planning, the town board actually approved a larger building on this site several years ago. Uh, the applicant came in um, with a revised plan to build a um, smaller warehouse. This is less than uh, 2,500 square feet. So it's this time around, the planning board has site plan approval authority. Uh, there's an existing um, house slash office on the site. Uh, there is uh, an existing garage and the applicant's proposing put in a, a small warehouse, um, 2,304 square feet. Uh, there'll be four uh, lighting fixtures around the perimeter of the building that'll be dark sky compliant. Um, these are the fixtures uh, here and um, Cree lighting fixtures. Uh, parking uh, and circulation. This is old route. 9W, um, which is a dead end at this portion. Um, and so here's the site, um, circling it over here. Uh, the building, uh, you know, a uh, nice uh, small um, building that's being proposed, uh, you know, modest, um, appropriate for the site. There is Behind the site uh, is the CSX uh, railroad tracks, and there's um, a number of other uh, commercial businesses on uh, along uh, 9W over here. For, uh, so, but this is the site, and um, so the recommendation is uh, it is a secret type two action. Uh, it's buildings you know less than four thousand square feet. Um, the, I provided the project re, uh, review comments and there is a draft resolution for the board's consideration, which I'll pull up here in just a moment. All right. Um, first, I need a uh, a motion to declare this a secret type two action. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Decker. Second. Mr. Chair, for a second. Okay. Discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Okay. Motions carry. Uh, next, uh, we have the resolution for conditional site plan approval. So, Mr. Chairman, the uh, the only change uh, in the draft resolution is uh, the applicant has submitted revised lighting specifications um, that are dark sky compliant, um, and. I got to go back now to my project review notes, see what other items I had in there. Um, do we have the applicant on the line with us? Or? Yes, yeah. we do. Okay. So, Carl, with respect to signs, you weren't, were you proposing a sign or no? No, there will be no signs. Okay. And with respect to the water, you, uh, you'd court, I believe you already have coordinated with the water department. Water I spoke department. with, uh, Mr. Majori quite a while ago about this, probably two years ago. And he suggested I tie into the existing sewer line that's coming out of the uh, office. And then I can grab the water from there too. I'm, I'm going to have a small bathroom in there, just a toilet and a sink. Okay, so Mr. Chairman, what I'd like to recommend is that the, uh, the comment uh, number four, I'm going to recommend uh, an amendment to the draft uh, resolution 
to delete number four as it's written and in its place, put that the applicant um, complies with all requirements of the town's water and sewer uh, departments. Okay. Uh, and then with that change, um, you would simply ask for a motion on the resolution as amended. Okay. Just writing this down, stand by. All right, can I have a motion to accept the resolution as amended? I'm for sure I'll make I'll a motion. Make a motion. Okay, uh, Frank was first. I'll take Andrew as a second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, roll call vote. Gabby? Ms. Hainer? Yes. Mr. Almquist? Yes. Mr. Decker? Yes. Mrs. Stravopoulos? Mr. Cervopoulos? Yes. Okay. Chairman Mulligan? Yes. Yes. Mr. Someone, you're, you're all set. Thank you. Next item of business, new business, Goodwin Whitaker lot line adjustment. Here's the resolution as amended. So. All right, so Goodwin Whitaker. Go ahead, Alan. Got it. There you go, Gary. Um, thank you. Um, so this one is a. Um, the applicant is simply looking to consolidate uh, two lots. And so it's a lot line adjustment, does not require a public hearing. Uh, it's a seeker type two action. Um, and a recommendation is to grant uh, lot line adjustment approval. I'm going to zoom in to the, to the map. Um, so, the, um, let me go, let me just back up one second here. Um, this, all right, so. Right, okay. So they're consolidating lots and there's a concurrent little minor adjustment between the lots that's shown in this area here. So, um, And they're showing, it's kind of hard to see this. Probably confusing everyone. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see. So this is the, this is to address an existing encroachment, by the way. So, you know, that's what's happening here. Mm -hmm. um, these lots, this lot and this lot is to be consolidated. So that's the lot line to be deleted. And then as a trade off between the two property owners, they're going to adjust the boundary here so that they'll pick up uh, this portion where there's currently a shed and uh, some other improvements on the site. So again, pretty straightforward. It addresses uh, an encroachment and um, you know, provides uh, this other lot, by the way, was just kind of floating out there landlocked. So it addresses that issue as well. Correct. Okay. Any other questions from the board? All right, hearing none. Uh, if I could have a motion to uh, declare this a secret type two action. I'll make that motion. Okay, Mr. Decker. Second. Second, Mr. Alquist, discussion. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, uh, okay. Motion's carried. And we have a resolution to approve the lot line adjustment. Yep. Um, I'll just go with the further be it resolved, Town of Ulster Planning Board hereby grants lot line adjustment approval. Uh, as described above to Norman Goodwin and Christopher and Allison Whitaker, subject to the conditions, limitations, restrictions set forth below. One plat may be filed in the office of the county clerk after signed by the chairman of the planning board. Two, no changes, erasure, modifications, or revisions shall be made to any plat after approval by the planning board and endorsed in writing on the plat. Three, the final plat must be filed in the office of the county clerk within 62 days of the date the final plat is approved by the planning board. And four, all fees, including consultant fees, shall be paid. And that is the draft resolution for your consideration. Hey, thank you. Can I have a motion to uh, approve the uh, resolution as read? I'm um, pushed here. Would make a motion. Thank you. Second. Uh, second, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Decker, thank you. Discussion. Roll call vote. Ms. Ener? Yes. Mr. Almquist? Yes. Mr. Decker? Yes. Mr. Stravopoulos? Yes. Chairman Mulligan? Yes. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, thank you, the Pesky Building Inspector. Um, I just don't know when the county's going to open for the filing. So the 62 days, I'm just worried about if they go beyond that, how we proceed. I believe they've been taking the maps, but they have to drop them at the security guard in the back. It seems to me that would be an administrative issue we could handle just within the within the building department. I don't yeah. have a problem. I don't have a problem extending it due to the circumstances we're under, just yeah. so long as we're all aware of that. Yeah, I, I think that that would be understood, given okay. uh, given what we're going through. Okay. We're not the only town in the county with that problem. Yeah. I think maybe a phone call to Dennis might straighten that out. Mr. Chairman? Go ahead, Jason. I, I've uh, recorded deeds and uh, maps in the past 30 days, so it shouldn't be an issue. Um, I, there's, there is a drop box in, behind the county building, and the, the county clerks are working, so uh, there may be some slight delay, but I think it can be done in 62 days. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. All right, next item of business, Joseph Emanuel, minor subdivision. You know, we're on. Hi, hey guys, can you hear me? Mike Viteri here. Yep. Uh, so we are um, back with Mr. Emanuel. Uh, as you guys know, we've been in there uh, previously with um, site plan work with regards to this site. Uh, we are now looking to take a piece of three different parcels. Uh, one being lands of Hamilton and Muir, which will convey uh, 0.33 acre to Mr. Emanuel. Um, lands of Wells in the middle here, which will convey 0.229 acre to Mr. Emanuel. And the lands of Gaddy, which will convey 0.345 acre to the lands of Emanuel. Um, as you know, we were had a tight fit behind the building as it came up with our last site plan we brought in front of you guys a few years ago. Um, this particular lot line revision will open up the back of the building. Um, the issues that we had in the past with uh, proving that we could get a fire truck in there and so on will now be erased as we will be taking um, much more space in the back. Um, and uh, I think this is a, a benefit to uh, Mr. Emanuel and to the neighbors as they are, uh, their current lot lines are, uh, are close uh, in terms of Mr. Emanuel's uh, structure. 
Okay. Comments, Alan? Um, can everyone see the shared screen? Yes. Okay, so uh, yeah, the existing property line is, is pretty close, 41 feet to the uh, rear of the building. So uh, this would you know, provide a greater buffer. There is kind of a natural separation between the residential area. Um, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going by memory, which is always dangerous at this age, but there's, there's a change in grade somewhere along here, right? It's yeah, and actually, if you were to visit the site, you will see that what we are proposing to take from those three parcels is basically what is already clear there. So we are not looking to like come in and clear an area or, or um, you know, any hardwoods or anything like that. We're kind of following the natural uh, course of what is cleared there already. Um, okay. I would not necessarily go by the Google image, but yes, it, you, you are close in saying that. But um, for the majority of what you are seeing, especially the lands of Wells and the lands of Gaddy, that was already cleared once years ago. Joe had proposed this particular lot line revision about uh, maybe 10 or 15 years ago and went ahead and did some work and then never went forward with the lot line revision. So now we're basically just moving forward with conveying what is already um, cleared and not occupied yet, but what is what looks to be uh, what should adjoin the current parcel owned by Joe. Okay. Um, Procedurally, uh, under the town code, it's actually a major resubdivision because it involves four lots, um, which just means you, uh, the planning board cannot waive a preliminary public hearing. It has to uh, it has to hold two public hearings. Public hearing, right? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think we have any issue with the. You know, it's not a time constraint issue. So if we have an extra public hearing, that's fine. Um, it would just be me ironing out the explanation to my client as to why we are doing a major resubdivision versus a lot line revision. I have no problem with following this through as however you guys prescribe. Um, it's just explaining why the zoning code makes this a major resubdivision versus a lot line adjustment slash revision. Yeah, well, in the town code, the uh, lot line adjustment or lot line revision is between two two parcels. So this, and then the resubdivision is adjustment of the boundaries between more than two. So that's where this gets triggered. Okay. And then the difference between a minor and a major is uh, whether it involves three or four lots, and this involves four. So technically, procedurally, legally, uh, we got treated as a major resubdivision. And so in terms of a major, are we going to be put through the scrutiny of what a major subdivision would be put through? Or are we going to be able to move along with this as, as if we were to have uh, a lot line revision in front of us? Uh, the board will you know, look at- We're not going to be stuck with doing archeological studies and all that, uh, are we? Uh, no, just an environmental impact statement. Okay. No, I had to say, <laughs> you didn't hear that. No, no, uh, no, it's, you're not, you know, you're not proposing any uh, development on the site. So, uh, I mean, it is, you know, pretty straightforward um, as, you know, you're adjusting the boundary lines. It's a resubdivision. Um, and, you know, so that's, that's what the board will look at. Um, so just because it has a title of a major subdivision doesn't mean we're going to put you through, or the uh, town board's going to, or planning board's going to put you through major hoops to uh, to address this issue. All right. I think I'd like to weigh in. Yes. Originally, he, originally he came to us. He wanted to expand his business, and the zoning districts are skewed in that particular location because they cut into his property. I just want him aware of that because he wanted to expand. He, he into is aware, he, Warren, he is aware that, that what he will be 
conveying will uh, what they will be conveying to him will not be commercial property. He is aware of that and he does not have any plans for structures there at all. So whether it's residential, commercial, however he likes to handle it, he is just looking to add space on there and is not proposing any kind of structure whatsoever. Understand. I just, I have to, I have to cover all the avenues. I appreciate that. And yeah. as long as he's looking at what he's looking at, we're fine. Yeah. We, we spoke of this, Joe and I spoke of this ourselves. Uh, we're both aware that, you know, the zoning districts change there. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, he won't be able to develop that piece in terms of a commercial piece of property, but it, it's basically going to be in all essence, uh, vacant land. I don't understand the zoning in that district myself, but as long as he's aware of it, I'm fine. And, and to be honest with you, it is kind of um, up to interpretation, that particular zoning line there. Um, no two maps or no two uh, systems show it in the same place. Uh, but we do know that we are dealing with what is currently occupied as residential and what is currently occupied as commercial as two different, um, you know, we're, we're going to be adding residential land to a commercial property, but we will be um, not proposing any development in that area. Unless it's down board. Okay. I understand. Well, you know, my, my, uh, my take is I always have to keep in mind that if 10 years from now that property is sold and the new owner wants to then develop that portion of their property to expand their business, then that's always can be an issue. Something that, you know, uh, boards have to keep in mind. And of course, a uh, board 10 years from now isn't going to know uh, the circumstances and the thinking of, uh, that we have gone through. So that's always an issue in my mind. But. Um, you know, we can put notes on the plat. We can um, put deed restrictions. I mean, there's ways to handle that, uh, you know, to perpetuate for the future. So, I mean, however you guys would want to go about that, that's no problem. If you want a note on the map saying, uh, you know, that that land is to remain residential or however you plan on, you know, handling that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. To, you know, move forward with yeah, that. I, you see that would be something I would like to see. All right, I think the maps should delineate the zoning districts. Yeah, those are shown here, uh, but I agree there should be notes that clearly spell that out. Okay. So you'll make that happen, Mike, right? Yeah, as long as you guys give me the verbiage, I have no problem. I'd, I'd like to have it on there and set up before we have our first uh, public hearing. This way we can, you know, solidify that it happened. Right, sure. Um, that we made the change. That shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Um, this is a secret unlisted action. Uh, I need a motion for a negative deck. I'm quist here. I'll make a motion. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Mr. Decker, thank you. Discussion? Hearing none. Question. Was... Someone try to say Question. something? Go ahead. Uh, the question, my question is, the representatives of each lot must sign an owner's consent to file. Has that been accomplished? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, you know, we just need that. Gabby, just make sure you have that in the file. I do Thank have you. it, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, we covered all those bases with, uh, with Mr. Emanuel back about a month ago. And um, as a matter of fact, all those all those particular uh, representation forms were actually signed in front of um, the attorney who will be closing the deal. Uh, so he actually handled all that and sent them over to me. You're the best, Mr. Viteri. Your father would be proud. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Uh, secondly, uh, we need a motion to accept the sketch plan. As presented.
I'll make that motion. Make a motion. Okay. Ms. Hainer, and was there a second from Mr. Alquist? Yes. Okay, thank you. Discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion's carried. And aye. thirdly, uh, need a motion to set a preliminary plat hearing for next month's meeting, July 14th. I will make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Are we going to recommend a, a negative deck? Yeah, that was, we did that. That was the first motion. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. I second the motion about July 14th. All right. Discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Alan, did I miss anything? I think you covered it, Gary. It's uh, so they'll, he'll come back with uh, you know, notes on the plat. Um, I can send you and Gabby some uh, proposed language for that, um, if needed. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, guys. Alan, if I don't see you anytime soon, thank you for your time, your professionalism. Good luck in your endeavors. Hey, thank you. We'll Take see care. You guys soon. Thank you. Okay, uh, final item for this evening is uh, okay. final resubdivision. Ms. Rua, thank you for your patience. You sat through this entire meeting. I know I was last on the list, but that's okay. Okay, so uh, Alan, comments? Uh, this one's pretty straightforward. It's uh, two lot minor resubdivision. Um, I'm going to go to the plat. Um, so the proposed action is uh, to create uh, this lot line and um, you see that little shed that's to be re, uh, relocated. Yeah, that's going to get pushed back. Yeah. And so uh, there is, um, they're creating two lots. Uh, each of the lots will comply uh, with the zoning uh, district rec regulations. This is in the um, R40 district, which has a minimum lot uh, size requirement of 60,000 square feet. Um, and uh, so the new- I'm sorry, what it, we're in R60, right? Um, R60, I'm sorry, it's my, uh, <laughs> it's my old eyes. That's okay, I have those too. <laughs> I'm, squ I'm squinting, so <laughs> yes, yeah. R60 and hence the 60,000 square foot lot. So each of the lots more than meets the minimum lot area requirement. Uh, this one is, will remain 10 acres and uh, this new lot will be 3.32 acres. Mm -hmm. So um, recommendation is to classify the proposed action as a minor resubdivision. Uh, class, Gabby, if we've already done some of these steps, uh, feel free to jump in. Um, classify the proposed action as a seeker unlisted action grant sketch plan approval, waive the requirement for a preliminary plant public hearing, which we can do because it's a minor subdivision, and schedule this matter for a final plant public hearing. And Mr. Chairman, you could ask for a motion to uh, take these actions. Uh, can, can, can everyone see this, That what I have on the board? You do need to take all of those actions tonight. We haven't done any of them. Okay. So you can have one motion to take those actions if you'd like. Okay. So uh, I assume everyone can see those five actions that we're going to uh, vote on this evening? Yes. yes. Okay. Good. Then can I have a motion to uh, take those actions as, as you have listed there on, on your screen? I'll make that motion. I'll, I'll second it. 
Strong quest second. Any discussion? Okay, and the, uh, the next, uh, the meeting would be the next meeting, July 14th for the uh, final plat public hearing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion's carried. Aye. Okay. All right. Um, all set? All set. set. We'll see you next month. Okay. Thanks. Hopefully, hopefully not on Zoom. But I knows? know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, we have one discussion item. I can get my notes. Juan, what was the discussion item that we talked about? Kingston Tires doing oh, sanitizing. Yes. Right, okay. right, right. Yeah. So, so what's the issue there? Kingston Tires was previously approved for uh, tire changing new tires. They want to sanitize the business. And my only concern is are A, is it allowed under their original approval? And B, are they going to CDC be approved? So they want to detail vehicles? Correct. Right. Okay. So my first question, I guess, is it within our purview as a planning board to uh, somehow ensure that they are sanitizing vehicles in the process of conducting their business? Uh, you know, ultimately, it would fall to me. Okay. I just want to make sure they can do it under their original approval, and then I'll have to deal with are they doing it as per requirements. Okay. Jason, any thoughts? Yes. Um, you know, I think that this would be under this in the discretion of the voting inspector if he believes that it is um, an allowed use uh, in that zoning district. Uh, he can allow it or disallow it. And then if there's an issue, he can the Kingston Tire can appeal that to the zoning board. So I'm not sure if this board really is the proper board to consider that request. I had that same thought. Um, okay. Warren, does that help you at all? <laughs> I don't have anything else to do except run around town and figure out if they're complying with the state mandate. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't have a problem with ensuring they're complying with the state mandate. Okay. So Warren, is the, is the issue whether they're going to be social distancing there or is it the actual the use whether that's allowed or not my concern is that they're going to detail the vehicle but are they going to leave the vehicle in less compliance with state mandate than they found it because we do have the cdc requirements with new vehicles and everything else that they have to sanitize when they touch the vehicle did, did you discuss that with them? Do they know that's part of the what they're up against? I have not discussed that with them yet because I wanted to get the board's feel on whether it was part of their original approval. Okay. All right. Warren, are these the requirements for... Uh, the COVID sanitization, or is this normal cleaning process? Well, ultimately, that would come down to what I decide. Um, I've been tasked with a lot of things, and most recently is compliance with whatever the, the state decides.
Well, I've, I've crawled through a number of the, the state requirements for uh, sanitizing and that sort of thing, just looking for things, not on purpose, but they just happen to be there. And there's tons and tons of requirements and regulations that called out in the, in the state laws handling uh, the, the, uh, the infection. So I don't know what their sanitization process includes, whether it's going to be that or whether they're going to be worrying about the, the chemicals that fall on the ground. Well, it, it applies to both. I mean, you have the CDC rules, which state, you know, the vehicle sanitized. When you get to what falls out of the vehicle, that's a whole nother set of regulations. So I have to monitor both. Mm -hmm. I personally think this is a health department question, not a planning board question. My opinion. Here's my problem. The health department, as far as I know, is still not staffed. Last time I contacted them, they didn't have any field agents. So there was nobody out there to enforce this. So consequently, it fell to me. Well, I would think the sanitization of a vehicle would be pretty much like sanitizing an outdoor table after somebody gets done eating there. And they wipe it down with alcohol or something, and that's it. <clears throat> Uh, except for the fact that the state hasn't, the state has given us a lot of guidelines for all the businesses that are opening. They have not addressed this one directly. So am I supposed to interpret other regulations? Maybe do it just like you would a car dealership. We bought a car and they had it completely sanitized, wheel covers, everything done before we even purchased it. I actually had to go to a car dealership today to decide how many people were allowed in the building. So I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> as well as three hair salons and two retail businesses. So I'm very familiar with, I'm supposed to keep up to date on all of this because I don't have a lot of help from state health or county health. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I don't think it's a planning board issue, but I under, clearly understand your concern. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah, I think it falls under the health department and then you're winging it. I just, I just wanted it out there that if you don't have an issue with it, I will deal with it best I can and we'll move forward. And while I have you all, I'm going to bring up another issue, um, Kingswood Plaza. We may not be familiar with it. They started with a two-story building. They went to a one-story building. Now they want a one-and-a-half-story building. <laughs> I guess we're all familiar with what I'm talking about, only because i got to deal with it. So their question is, does it go back to planning? I would say yes. Yes. We would have to. I think planning board needs to, yeah, planning board needs yeah. to stand up on it. Sure. I think the elevation's going to change. Yeah. Yeah, they have Marking, a marking have requirement one. changes, right? Yeah. That, that was exactly my take on it. And that's where I was headed with it. But since I had you all here, I would present it. Well. You're, uh, you're correct. Okay. All right. I have one last thing to go back to campers world and the lighting. Is, is there some kind of, um, fines that can be levied for non-compliance? What can the building department do to kind of get them to step up, come to the table anyway? Okay. If, if you're not familiar with the building department, we are known for closing businesses for non-compliance. So I will go back to them and present to them that they need to present to us their proposed plan and how they propose to correct the situation. I have already done that. They have not complied. 
So I will revisit the local manager and present it to him again. May I, may I suggest you discuss that with a supervisor first? <laughs> I already have. Okay. I just didn't want to keep him out of that loop. I never keep him out of the loop. I, I'm sure you don't. Me. Very wise to do that. <laughs> Extremely, trust me. Okay. All right. That's, I don't mean to that's, sound like a broken record, but what about the light at the Kingston Block and Masonry? It blinds you coming down uh, East Chester or was it whatever that road is. 9W. East Chester Street Bypass. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And I know I brought it up a million times before, but it's still so bright, right in your eyes when you're driving down that road. FYI, we have renamed my department the complaint department. If you have an issue, you call us first, and we will address it. Well, that was going to be addressed with a facade change, which hasn't happened. So, uh, exactly, it never they right. never came back after we told them everything we wanted. Right. Well, I did manage to get um, the diner, Kings Valley Diner, is now coming to us after the fact to get the facade change, just like we did with the Marriott. So now I will address them and they will come to us and we can address that also. Okay. Yeah, I just, uh, I don't understand why if someone wants to change the color of a building that has to come before the planning board. It seems to me you are certainly capable enough to decide whether, you know, the color is right. You know, certainly we don't want pink or something like that, but. Um, I, uh, that's just a personal opinion, but, uh, Gary, you don't know that we call it the Popeye's rule. Uh, man, man. Yes. <laughs> yeah. right. Due to the fact of the color they chose for that building. And that's where this all started. Okay. But if they had to come before you, you would keep it from becoming pink or orange or whatever. Right. So. Uh, absolutely. Okay. That's all right. I would project, I would, no, no, no apologies necessary. Which is why when Marriott changed their colors twice without talking to us. And, you know, the Marriott building looks great. That, that's, you know, they were, I think they were, you know, it's a nice, nice design, change of color, whatever. But you, you are correct. But in my position, I have to be fair and equal. So I have to have everybody presented. Absolutely. Right. I cannot pick and choose who gets to decide. And right. when I explain that, they all understand. Of course, right. No, that's how it should be. All right, any other items for discussion before we adjourn? There's one that keeps coming up and the, and the Emanuel situation brought it out again. When zoning went through, most uh, properties against a highway were some number of feet back as commercial. And behind that, it was residential or whatever else it was behind it. And a lot, and there are many, many properties in the town where the front half of the property is zoned commercial and the back half is residential. Yeah. And it creates a real mess. I know a number of years ago, one of the towns in the southern part of the county was able to get a grant to get that straightened out. It took a while, but it was well worth it in the long haul for everybody concerned. Par uh, parcels on Morton Boulevard, for example, are that way. The side oh. away from the railroad tracks are uh, half, half of it's commercial in the front and, ba and the back half is, is all residential. Mm -hmm. So Frank, you're ask, you're asking for a modification to the zoning, if I'm not mistaken. It's, it's definitely the zoning map. Yeah, the zoning map amendment. It, it's a big, big job. Oh, absolutely. I agree. I went through this in Shandaken, so I know exactly what you're talking about. And I just thought about, do you remember, what's, what's the status of our digital sign law in the town? Do we, is that... Is that ever going to get finalized? Because uh, we've seen that get more and more people thinking they can put digital signs up. Um, 
I know that's going to be an issue of the gentleman who's going to put the laundromat on Ulster Avenue. And he owns those billboards and he thought he could put digital signs there and we told him no. But there's really no law yet, right? I gave language to uh, the supervisor probably six, eight months ago. I worked with the uh, chairman of the zoning board and right. we worked all that through. And Jim said we would deal with it when we are ready. And I guess they haven't had a, a board meeting to where they want to sit down and discuss it. Okay. Well, now you have now you have me. So I can reach out to both board chairmen, Gary and and Jeffrey, and we can't see if we come to an agreement about this because the last. Uh, digital sign on Hurley Avenue came back with requirements from county right. and that they approved it per se but it should follow our code which we don't have. That was cross point right? Correct. Yeah. Well I, uh, Jeffrey and I talked about it back when you know when we had timely signs do the demo and um, I mean the I thought it was a done deal, but that was that was last year, more, more than a year ago. All right, I just wanted to put that out there. We should it would it would be helpful to have a, a law, have it in code. When the apocalypse is over, I'll try to look into <laughs> it further. Right. Okay, that'll be what next year. <laughs> <laughs> the way it's no, going, it'll, yeah. be, it'll be later this year. Trust me. Take care right. of it. Okay. All right. Anything else? Thank you, everyone. Um, hopefully, maybe next month we'll have a regular meeting in person. That would be good. Technology. That would be, bad. That would be good. <laughs> it would be good. Technology is a wonderful thing, but it has its limits. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's got better as we went along. So, Alan, once again, uh, thank you so much for all you've done. It's been a real pleasure working with you, and good luck to you uh, as chairman of the planning board for Orange County. Did I say that right? Uh, Commissioner of Planning, and Commissioner. yes, thank you. Commissioner of Planning, okay. You will be missed, uh, Alan. Yes, you will. Well, yep. thank you. I'll miss everyone there, and it's been a real pleasure uh, working with each of you, and uh, uh, I'll miss the work as well because it's uh, it's been very rewarding uh, over the years to work with each of you and we've had some good projects come through and uh, yeah. I think it made a difference you know it's uh, yeah is there any land down there left to build on now that you have the uh, Lego land in you know all that other stuff oh well, yeah there's still quite a bit of land there <laughs> <laughs> uh, the challenge is going to be managing it and uh, yeah. And, and I think there's going to be both Ulster and, and Orange is going to be considerable pressure for um, single family residential development again with folks wanting to get out of the city. Yeah, okay. yeah I would uh, imagine. 100%. Right. Yeah. Sure. I grew up in town of Minnesink. There's a lot of land out there. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of solar farms now, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there are. Yeah. 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 yeah and is that the reason for the tie? <laughs> yes, yes. I'm looking at the clock so I can drop the time. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> okay. Let's let him go. Yep. Alan, good luck to you. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Alan. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for everything. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. Good I appreciate night. the opportunity. That's good. Thank you. Good luck. Motion to adjourn. Second that okay. motion. Second. All right. All, right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Stay well. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Good night, everyone.